Unbox the printer stand and unwrap all parts. Position the base plate face down on the floor and align each leg with the holes in the plate. Hand start each screw but do not tighten. After all four screws are in place, then tighten down each screw with a number three screwdriver. Do this for all four legs and the other screws. Once all four legs have been properly set into place, flip the stand over. Place the docking plate to the right side of the printer stand. The legs will fit into the slot on the docking plate. The alignment holes need to be located on the far back side of the stand. Measure the printer stand on the docking plate side so that the height of the stand is 32 and a quarter inches high. The leveling pads can be adjusted to obtain the correct height. Then measure the other two legs for the same height, the 32 and a quarter inches. Use a level if the floor is uneven. Locate the two alignment pins. Place the alignment screw from the bottom, pushing the screw upward. Thread the alignment pin onto the screw and tighten down. Unbox the conveyor and unwrap all parts. Set the conveyor on the floor or a workbench and align all the joint front legs to the mounting bracket. Locate the long mounting rod and slide the rod through the bracket and legs. Place the spacer between the legs and then push the rod through the second leg. Tighten the acorn nut once the leg is in position. Locate one of the back legs and align it with the adjustable back bracket. Place the leg to the inside of the bracket and slide the bolt into the slot through the leg and hand tighten the lock washer and nut. Locate the second back leg and align it with the back process. Repeat the same process with the bolt, lock washer, and nut. Locate the short mounting rod. Lift up on the legs and align the positioning holes. Slide the mounting rod through the holes in the legs, placing the spacer between them. Tighten the acorn nut once the leg is in position. Use an adjustable wrench to tighten down both nuts on the back bracket. Then tighten down all the other acorn nuts with the same wrench. Flip the conveyor over, carefully lifting from the center and standing upright. Install the exit tray after loosening the two screws. Once the tray has been placed into position, tighten the screws. Install the tilt bracket after loosening the two screws. Once the tilt bracket has been placed into position, hand tighten until the bracket can be verified at the correct height. Install the media rod and wheel on top of the conveyor. Unbox the feeder and unwrap all parts. Set the feeder upright on the floor. Insert the media guide rails and thread until hand tight. Remove two screws from the white sensor block. Remove the red tape from the sensor on the sensor block.
Install the media base plate. Replace the two screws to hold the media plate into position. Install the media guide on top of the guide rails and loosen the side guides and slide away from the center. Remove the two red caps from the media guide rails. Install the media guide stop and slide it into place. Then reinstall the red caps. Install the feeder's serial communication cable. Tighten both screws with a number one flathead screwdriver. Install the elevator interface phone cord cable. Unbox the printer and unwrap all parts. Locate the lift handles on each side of the printer. With at least two people, lift the printer, setting it on top of the printer stand. Locate the two alignment pins and gently set the printer down so that the printer sits flat on the stand. Adjust the tilt bracket so that the L-shaped part of the bracket can slide between the printer and the stand. Make sure the conveyor height is not blocking the movement of the exit arms on the printer. Install the serial communication cable from the conveyor to the printer. Tighten both thumb screws. Plug in the supplied 15 amp power cable into the printer and plug in the ethernet cable into the printer. Move the feeder close to the printer. Plug in the second end of the elevator interface phone cord cable. Plug in the feeder serial communication cable into the printer and tighten both screws with the number one flathead screwdriver. Slide the feeder into the docking plate making sure that the thumb screw has been raised on the media guide. If needed, adjust the docking plate for proper position against the printer. The top of the media guide back plate must be aligned at eye level right at the red stickers on the printer. Once the feeder is at the correct height, then tighten down the thumb screw on the media guide. Red block features. Setting 1 standard is for most normal print jobs. Setting 2 heavy is for heavy stock medias. Before powering on the printer, install the ferrite connector on the printer power cable. Install the media identification label into the cassette tray. Remove the orange protector from the adjustable paper sliders in the cassette and load paper letter long edge. Remove the protective media sheet from the underside of the drums inside of the printer. Before closing the printer lid, make sure that the drum basket cage has been closed properly. Install the paper catcher on top of the printer after removing the pop-up cover. Power on the printer by flipping the power switch up. Once the printer is ready to print, press the down arrow button to print information and then press enter. Next, press enter configuration, then enter to execute. A print configuration page will exit the printer. Keep the sheet in a file folder with your original print documentation. If you're needing to install the separator pad, pull the feeder away from the printer and remove the red block from the multipurpose tray wing. Lift the wing upward and place the separator into the slotted locator and press into place. 